Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a very powerful function in JAX. JAX is an open source library developed by Google DeepMind and has rapidly become one of the most critical key components of modern AI and large language model development. By combining automatic differentiation, just-in-time compilation, automatic vectorization, JAX delivers incredible performance in hardware accelerators like TPUs and GPUs. It's the engine behind cutting-edge research and large-scale development from places like Google DeepMind and others. If you want me to pick one single function within JAX to start with, I am some will definitely be one of the top pick. All right, can't wait to share with you. Let's dive into it. Einsam is short of Einstein summation. It is a single function that can express a vast array of tensor operations from simple vector dot products to complex neural network contractions with a single concise string. So you don't have to juggle between analyst function and chain them together like dots, multiply, transpose, sum, and reshape. Einsam is your magical tool. So how does Einsam works? The magic of Einsam lies in a tiny domain-specific language string. It's helpful to think of it as a three-step process. The first is element-wise multiplication based on the input labels. The second step is summing over repeated labels. And the third step is ordering the output axes as specified. Take this as example. The input is ij and jk, and the output is ik. So the input labels is labels on the left of this arrow. This define the input tensors. Tensor is just a fancy way to say array or matrices. ij, jk means two 2D tensors. Note that a label repeated on the left but not on the right is a summation index. So here the index j, it appears on the left but doesn't appear on the right. This means j is summed out. And then we have the free indices. Label that appear on both the left and right are free indices. Here i and k forms the output. The core mechanism is for our matrix multiplication example, ij, jk to ik, Einsam performs an element-wise product between the two input arrays, aligning them on their j-axis. Then it sums along this j-axis. Finally, it ensures the output axis are i and k. This single expressive command replaces multiple separate operations. Let's use more example to understand isum. Let's start with transpose. This is the simplest case. We have one input matrix with axis i and j. By swapping the labels in the output to j i, we are telling isum to reorder the axis, effectively transposing the matrix. Here's the actual JAX implementation. A is a two by three matrix. And when we do Einsum ij to ji for a matrix, b becomes a 3 by 2 matrix. This is the visualization. Now let's take a look at sum. This is sum along the axis. Here the label j appears in the input, but not the output. This tells Einsum to sum over the j axis. This is equivalent to a dot sum and axis equals to 1. Here's the actual JAX implementation. A is the same 2 by 3 matrix, and B is the Einsum with input as ij and output as i. And this is the visualization. We still keep the axis i, but we sum over all the elements in axis j. 0 plus 1 plus 2 equals to 3. 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals to 12. The next example is dot product. We have two 1D vectors, and the axis i is repeated across both inputs. Since i does not appear in the output, we multiply the corresponding elements and sum the results. And this is the JAX implementation. Let's say a is an array of length 3 and b is also an array of length 3. s is the dot product of a and b and this is implemented by ansum. And this is the visualization. We have a and b and both of them have the same i axis. So we multiply the corresponding elements and sum the results. 1 multiplied by 4 plus 2 multiplied by 5 plus 3 multiplied by 6 equals to 32. Next example is matrix multiply, matmul. This is probably the most important example that you need for large language model training because LLM is basically series of series of matmul. And here the input is ij and jk. 
the output is IK. So the common axis J is summed over, and the remaining axis I from the first matrix and K from the second matrix form the output matrix. Here is the actual JAX implementation. A is 2 by 3, B is 3 by 4, and after we have the map move via einsum, C will be 2 by 4. And this is the visualization. 20 equals to 0 multiplied by 0 plus 1 multiplied by 4 plus 2 multiplied by 8. The 23 comes from 0 multiplied by 1 plus 1 multiplied by 5 plus 2 multiplied by 9 and so on and so on. The next example is element-wise multiplication. Because the input and output labels are identical for both matrices, i and j, and i and j, the i sum simply multiplies the element at the same position, and no axes are summed because the output is still i and j. This is the actual implementation with JAX, and this is the visualization. As you can see, both a and b is 2 by 3, and after this element-wise multiplication, the first element equals to 0 multiplied by 6, and 1 multiplied by 7, and 2 multiplied by 8, 3 multiplied by 9, 4 multiplied by 10, and 5 multiplied by 55. Next example is outer product. The input is i and j for two tensors or arrays, and the output is i, j. Since the input label i and j are different and both appears in the output, Einsum multiplies every element of the first vector by every element of the second, creating a matrix. And this is the actual JAX implementation. A is 1, 2, 3, an array of length 3. B is 4, 5, an array of 2. And after this outer product, it's going to be a matrix of 3 by 2. And the value 4 here equals to 1, multiply by 4. 8 equals to 2, multiply 4. 12 equals 3 multiplied 4, and the 5 here equals to 1 multiplied 5, 10 is 2 to 5, 15 is 3 to 5. The next example is matrix trace. This is also a very interesting and useful function. The trace is the sum of the diagonal elements of a matrix. By repeating the index i for a single input ii, we select the diagonal elements. And since i does not appear in the output, these elements are summed. This is the actual JAX implementation of the matrix tracing. Let's say A is a 3 by 3 matrix of these values. The input is ii and the output is nothing, which means we're going to iterate through all the possible values of i, and we are only looking at the position ii, which is the diagonal elements. And after the iteration, we're going to sum it up because the output has nothing. In this case, we plus 1, 5, 9 equals to 15. The last simple example I have is batch matrix multiplication. Batch matrix multiplication is a cornerstone of deep learning. We have a batch of matrices. The B axis is the batch dimension. Einsum is smart enough to see that B is present in both inputs and the outputs. So it performs the matrix multiplication IJ, JK to IK independently for each item in the batch. This is the actual JAX implementation. Let's say A is batch of 10 matrices, each one is 2 by 3. B is also batch of 10 matrices, each is 3 by 4. And if we do einsum of bij, comma bjk to bik, JAX is smart enough to make sure C is of shape 10 batches and each of the matrices is 2 by 4. This is the visualization. Hopefully at this point, you understand the basics of how einsum work. Next, let's use a actual example that I'm using in work to demonstrate how Einstein is getting used in production environments. The example I have in mind is dot product attention. The scale dot product attention mechanism is the cornerstone of the transformer model. This function uses Einstein twice to perform the core computations with remarkable clarity and efficiency. The high-level goal is to calculate how much each word or the query should pay attention to every other word or key in a sequence, and then produce a new representation for each word based on a weighted sum of all the word values. Before we dive into the actual implementation, I would like to show how dot product attention, just in case someone is not familiar. This is the scale dot product attention calculation. The input is QKV, 
and we're going to do mat multiplication for q and k and then we're going to scale the result by a factor of square root of the depth this is done because for large values of depth the dot product grows large in magnitude pushing the softmax function where it has small gradients resulting in a very hard softmax afterwards depending on whether we're doing training or inference we have the mask and then we do a softmax and in the end we do matrix multiplication with b all right let's dive into the code this is a code snippet i copy from a actual production script with some modification of course this dot attention function calculates the attention weights it takes four parameters as input query key value those three are required and all of them are jacks arrays the attention mask is optional it can be non can also be jacks array in this function we're going to use the notation b equals to batch size n equals number of hats s equals to sequence length of key and value and t equals to the sequence length of query h equals to the dimension of hats q is batch size number of hats length of the query and dimension of hats both key and value is batch size number of hats sequence length and dimension of hats the mask is a float tensor with shape broadcastable to this shape it means the last dimension have to be tns to match the queries and key values the other dimensions can be arbitrary to match the shape as long as it's broadcastable i'm going to explain later in details and this function returns two outputs the first one is the output with shape bnth this is basically the contextualized embeddings of each query and then we have the attention weights in the second element this is the actual function please pause and take a look if you want to this is the step-by-step -step breakdown the first step is calculate the raw similarity scores this is the dot product part we use einsum to calculate the similarity between every query vector and every key vector so the input is query vector which is batch number of heads length of query and dimension of heads key is batch size number of heads length of key and dimension of heads the operation einstein performs a dot product along the matching head dimension h b and n are treated as batch dimensions the result b and t s contains the raw similarity score for each query which is of dimension t against each key of dimension s step two is scaling the scores dot product scores can become very large which can destabilize the training and to counteract this we scale them down by the square root of the head dimension step three is applying the mask masking is crucial for ignoring irrelevant parts of the sequence such as padding tokens or in decoders future tokens to prevent cheating the mask adds a large negative numbers to the logits you want to ignore making their scores effectively zero after the softmax now let's take a look at why is mask of shape arbitrary and tns and what is broadcastable the mask entire job is to modify the scaled attention logits tensor and the shape of it is b and ts before the softmax step for the addition to work the mask shape must be broadcastable to the logits Broadcasting is the magic that allows jacks to perform operations on array of different but compatible shapes without actually creating large tiled copies in memory. This dot 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 means the preceding dimension can be one or match the logit shape to allow broadcasting. For example, if we take a look at the padding mask, this is used to ignore padding tokens. The mask depends only on the batch and key sequence and its shape can be B 1 1 s this is broadcastable it broadcasts perfectly to b and t s jax is just going to stretch the dimensions of size 1 to n and t the example 2 is for causal mask this is to prevent the position from seeing future positions the mask depends only on the query and key positions its shape is 1 1 t s forming a triangular mask of allowed connection that also broadcasts to the full logic shape next step is normalizing scores into weights and in this case we use the softmax function it converts the scaled masked scores into a probability distribution along the key 
For each query, the sum of its attention weights across all keys will now equals to 1. The axis equals to minus 1 is the last axis, which is the sequence length axis. The last step is producing the final output. We use the attention weights to create a weighted sum of the value vectors. This is the second key use of einsum. And the input is attention weights, which is BNTS and value BNSH. The final output BNTH is a contextualized embedding for each query, containing information from the entire value sequence weighted by relevance. Hopefully with this example, you now understand EinSum better and its actual usage in LLM training. Now, what's the advantage of using EinSum? It makes your code cleaner, more flexible, and often a lot faster. This is especially true in a framework like JAX, where EinSum can be just-in-time compiled and optimized. The first main advantage is readability. EinSum strings are self-documenting, if you are familiar with the notation. To me, it's a lot cleaner than a chain of transposing, reshaping, and multiplying calls. The next one is flexibility. You can use one function to rule them all. If you need to multiply sum and transpose in one go, you can use sum. It can handle in a single atomic operation, reducing intermediate arrays and mental overhead. The last one, of course, efficiency. Because we're combining operations, sum often avoids creating large intermediate arrays this saves memory and can be significantly faster than chaining multiple separate function calls. For example, for the same implementation of the dot product attention, the chained JMP function is a lot slower than JMP.einsum. So using einsum is significantly faster. All right, hopefully you find this video helpful. And now you are familiar with einsum. You can start here and play more with Jax, build more cool stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye.